What's good, everybody? Today, we're gonna be talking about what is the correct credit score or the credit score that you should be looking at to know that you know that you know that you are seeing your true and most accurate credit score. Now, if you don't know me, I'm Will Frazier, your business and credit expert, here bringing you the tips you need to get your credit back on track. And if you like to hear tips about getting your personal credit in order, as well as different accounts that you can apply for, such as loans and credit cards to help build your credit or just to fund expenses or purchases, as well as learning about information that can help you to obtain accounts to fund your business or just different business strategies, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you'll get notifications of any time I put out information just like this. Now, why do you need to know information about what is the most accurate credit score that is out there? Because basically there's a whole bunch of confusion out there when it comes to what is your accurate credit score, where to obtain an accurate credit score, what credit scores you're gonna see when you actually apply for stuff. It's just a whole mess of confusion. And you see one number here, one number there, and it's just an entire mess. So it helps you to understand what is the information that you need to be paying attention to to identify that right or that correct score. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you guys out there are using Credit Karma, and you've probably been in that situation before where you go to Credit Karma, it tells you, oh, you have a 720 credit score, and then you go try to apply for that business funding, and then they tell you, oh, well, no, you only have about a 600. Or you go to Credit Karma, it tells you you got like a 680 credit score, then you actually go to the car dealership, and it tells you you only got like a 595. And that's not what you would expect and at all, especially based on what you just saw on Credit Karma's website. And that's not even to say if somebody checks Experian, you can't even see what Experian says on Credit Karma. So it can be very misleading, not to mention, there are a lot of different credit monitoring softwares out there and services out there. Not all of them are providing the same types of credit scores either. So that leads to more confusion when you actually apply at a lender. Even when you go to this lender and that lender, you may end up seeing different information as far as what your credit score is. So it, none of this stuff helps in you getting clarity on where you really are in regards to your credit. So if you stick around to the end of this video, I promise you, you'll have all the information that you need to understand what's going on with all these differences in credit scores and to understand where you can go to make sure that you are looking at the most accurate information. Now, to get started, there are two main things that you really need to know in regards to credit scores, and that's that there are basically two different types of credit scores. One is gonna be your FICO score, and the other is gonna be a Vantage credit score. Now, the best way that I can explain these to you in simple terms is gonna be similar to looking at Windows versus Macintosh as far as the software on your computer. Or we could say Android versus Apple as far as your cell phones go. So basically, they do the same thing, but they go about it differently. And basically, with the two different credit scores, they have a different algorithm in which they use to calculate your credit score. So another way of thinking about it is looking at the temperature. So if you look at a thermostat, you'll usually see Celsius and Fahrenheit. So whatever you feel as far as the heat or the cold is going to be the same amount of heat or cold. But when you look at the thermostat, whether you're looking at Fahrenheit or Celsius, you're gonna get two different numbers that's telling you the same thing, basically. So the two numbers may not align as far as how close they are in number range, but they're telling you that it's the same, it's a certain amount of heat outside or it's a certain amount of cold outside, and that's the best way to explain it. Now, no one really knows the inner workings of the algorithm and what all details they take into consideration all the way down to the T to be able to formulate a plan that you can know exactly I go do this, this and that and then I'm going to get the perfect score. But basically we do have a good general idea of what information is in that algorithm to try to do all of the best actions that we can do to get our score to the best place possible. But the reality is doing those same actions is going to get you a different amount of points based on which credit score you end up looking at. Now, when it comes down to the use of the Vantage score versus the FICO score, whenever you go to a lender, more than likely, they are going to be using a FICO score. They will not be using a Vantage score. They are starting to become more places that are starting to use a Vantage score, like some property rental places. I've seen some of them using Vantage scores versus FICO scores, and there are a lot of industry-specific scores that are out there as well, which I'll get into in a second, 
But for the most part, if you're trying to apply for a credit card, a car loan, a mortgage, you're gonna be seeing a FICO score as far as what they use to determine what your score is. Now, I know you might be thinking, okay, that clears it all up. Landing score versus FICO score, now I know what to look for. But it's not that simple, there's more to it than that. And also to let you know, Credit Karma is using that Vantage credit score. So that is the type of score that you will see when you go there. And a lot of credit monitorings that you might be familiar with, they actually use the Vantage score as well. Only some of them are gonna use the FICO score. And of course, those are gonna be the ones that you're gonna wanna lean towards when you're trying to find the correct information. But again, that's not all the information that you need to know. Now, another thing that you need to know in regards to these different credit scores that are out there is the fact that there are different versions of FICO. So FICO has a lot of different versions. There's FICO 2, FICO 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 8, 9, and 10. So when you're looking at these different versions of FICO, the way to explain them is going to be like different versions of Windows. Every few years, Windows lets out an update to Windows to add more features or to change things around and make it you know, more useful based on the current time and day. So FICO does the same because the FICO score is there to determine how likely you are to go late on an account within the next 24 months. So that's what the score is trying to predict. Of course, it gives you a higher number based on it not being very likely for you to be in that situation. And you get a lower score based on you being more likely to end up in that situation. But every few years, FICO releases updates to try to make the score more accurate at calculating a person's risk factor to a lender based on the current consumer spending and credit behavior. So of course, they study this information to get an idea on consumer behaviors in regards to spending and using credit and then they factor that stuff into the new algorithms that they create in these new versions of FICO and again FICO's customer is the lender not really you I know you may think it is you because it of course is attached to you but the FICO score was created as a way for lenders to be able to tell who they should give money to and who they shouldn't so their first priority and their first customer at FICO is really the lender now that being said with there being different versions of FICO with adjustments being made with each new version that tells you right there that each version is going to calculate your score differently and those different versions based on the numbers that I mentioned like you know eight nine ten and whatever that's going to be like the base version of FICO and it's important for you to know that because there's another layer to this confusion that you need to understand in order to see why you're having different credit scores. Now that other layer is a modifier to your base score within whatever version of FICO is out there. So that modification is going to be a industry specific score or a product specific score. So basically your FICO score will get altered if you're applying for a car. There's what's called an auto industry FICO score. So if that particular lender is using FICO 8 that you're applying for a car with, they will take FICO 8 and they will make adjustments to your FICO 8 score based on your car history or things that are more relevant to car history. And they will alter your score because of course, for the lender to be able to calculate the risk with you purchasing a particular product like a car versus something like a credit card, they of course know that your behavior with all credit cards is that's all you've ever used. That's not gonna give them the most accurate determination of how likely you are to go late on this car. So if you have had previous cars in the past or something similar that can relate to this new purchase that you're making, then they're gonna adjust your score either positively or negatively. So if you have old repoed cars or charged off cars that went unpaid, that is going to negatively affect your FICO score under the auto industry score. So if your FICO 8, for example, was like a 680, but you had a bunch of repos on there, when you try to apply for a car and that auto industry adjustment comes into play, your 680 might go down to like a 600. That's just an example. That's not an exact number that how it would happen, but that's just to let you know that it's gonna adjust your score down because of your car history. Now there's also a product specific adjustment for credit cards with your FICO score. And there are different versions of FICO scores out there if you're trying to apply for insurance for your car, if you're trying to apply for a rental home or an apartment or something like that, they have a specific score for rentals as well and for insurance. So again, this all leads to the confusion of there being a whole bunch of different credit scores out there. Now, just to add that last bit of fuel to the fire that we already have burning here, as far as the confusion, there's also the fact that each lender is not forced to use a specific 
version of FICO. Every lender that you go to and every lender that you apply with can use any version of FICO that they so choose to use. If they want to hang on to the oldest version of FICO that's out there, they can do that. If they want to get the newest version of FICO that's out there, they can do that. Now, mind you, switching to newer versions can be costly with you know a bigger company that has to do that more widespread across the company. So they might be slower to go to the newer versions, but just know that they have the ability to do that if they wanted to. But because there is not a uniform standard that you have to use a certain version of FICO, you can go to this credit union and this bank and try to apply and then get two different numbers as far as what your FICO score is. And then of course you have to add in the adjustment based on the type of product that you're getting or the type of industry credit score that is needed for the type of thing that you're applying for. So again, all of that adds to the confusion of why they have all these different credit scores out there. So hopefully that adds some clarity onto the confusion it may not make it any less confusing but hopefully you at least understand why it's so confusing so now you need an answer you need to know what it is that you can do where can you go to try to get the most accurate information before you go to a lender because of course you should, you should always get this information before you go to a lender because you don't want to go into the dealership or go apply for that business loan and then end up getting an inquiry and then walking out without an account because it's way worse to get an inquiry and have nothing to show for it versus getting an inquiry but actually getting the funds that you hope to obtain before you apply. The most accurate places you can go and also the most expensive places you can go to get all of the versions or a lot of the versions of your FICO score is going to be myfico.com. They are going to have the different versions of FICO and they'll also show you your FICO credit card score and your FICO auto score so you can get the best idea of where you stand for virtually whatever it is that you're trying to apply for. Now, I know a lot of you guys like to go to freeannualreports.com, but really, I kind of steer people away from that unless it's certain situations where they need certain information on accounts or they just really need a free report because those reports can be pretty long and I believe with most of them still, you have to pay for, for to get your credit score on the particular bureau and I can't remember if they're FICO scores or not, but I do know that they don't naturally just come with those credit reports. And like I said, those credit reports are extremely long anyway. They can be 100 pages long for one bureau in a lot of cases. But one thing that I do recommend to people is there's my score IQ that I use for all of my customers and for myself. And it's a pretty decent way of being able to monitor your credit every month. You get FICO scores. They particularly show you the FICO 8 scores, which a lot of lenders do use nowadays, the FICO 8 score, which some of them are switching over to FICO 9, but a lot of them now are using the FICO 8. So I've just found that it to have easy to read reports. It puts all three bureaus side by side. All the information is concise, easy to read, and it's a very good resource to have. I can see my credit report every month and I can see what is going on with it and keep up with my FICO scores on a consistent basis. And there are other options out there that also provide you with a FICO score. If you go to the three bureaus websites, only one of the three bureaus actually gives you a FICO score. The other two give you different versions of Vantage scores when it comes down to the credit score that they show you for your credit report. So I know you might have thought that going to the credit bureaus directly for your credit reports might be the way to get the most accurate information, but the credit bureaus actually came up with the Vantage scores. So because they're trying to compete with FICO score, of course they would rather promote their own credit score more so than try to get you to use that. But again, one out of those three bureaus actually do give you a FICO score, I believe it's Experian, but the other two you will not receive that. And when you're applying for things and trying to get your most accurate score the best thing to know in all of this confusion is that there is no accurate credit score the best thing that you can do is get the most accurate information and the reason why i say that is because the fact that each lender can use a different version of fico and you won't know unless you call and see or if a particular lender has a certain deal or credit card that you want to get and you have to apply with them at that moment you're at the mercy of whichever credit score version they're using. So because different places can use different scores, it's never really going to be the same. So the best thing that you can do is try to look at as many versions as you can, or at least the FICO 8 since a lot of lenders use it, and make sure that you have corrected as much as you can on your credit report to ensure that you have the highest score no matter where you go. Because if you have anything negative that's on your credit report, then of course, that's not gonna make your score be more different in different places, but it will ensure that you don't have the highest 
highest score in any version that's available out there. So make sure you're doing what you can to work on your credit and get to a better place. Now, if you have questions on solving a lot of the credit issues that you may be having, I have a free ebook down in the description. It's called the Top Credit Questions. You can download that ebook. It can answer a lot of your questions while you're trying to work on your credit yourself or just different situations that might happen to you in regards to credit from co-signing to being sued. So again, it's down in the description. Click the link, check it out for free, and then take things from there and hopefully get your credit to a better place. Now, I thank you guys for sticking around to the end of this video, and I'll see you guys next time.